Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple. That's your no shit gaming news video. Three news stories in one video with zero faff. Recently I reported that the future of Anthem could have some potential as Bioware is reworking the game into what it should always have been. However, the studio has just lost two of its key players, leaving the already struggling studio in an even more dubious position. In a blog post by Chief Studios Officer for EA, Laura Mila, she explained that both Casey Hudson and Mark Dara have left the studio. Casey Hudson was Bioware's general manager and helmed the Mass Effect trilogy as project director and also directed Knights of the Old Republic, while Mark Dara was the mind behind the Dragon Age franchise and served as executive producer. Both published their own statements to Bioware's blog, both of which are longer than Mila's. All three statements lack anything in the way of concrete information of what comes next and are filled with farewells and gratitude, but there is one potential point of interest. In Hudson's statement, he says, this is a good time for change for both myself and Bioware, potentially indicating that he wasn't happy with how the studio was operating. He also expressed interest in creating new things, so we may well see him pop up at another studio in just a few months. Bioware vets are showing up everywhere, and at the start of this year, Wizards of the Coast announced that it established a new studio called Archetype Entertainment. That studio has two ex-Bioware staff, with James Olin and Chad Robertson. Could we possibly see Hudson or Dara joining their former colleagues here, or at any other studios around the world? Or perhaps will they start something entirely new? Losing these two is a huge blow to Bioware's teams, and speaks to a very troubling situation over there. Hudson originally left the studio in 2014 before returning in 2017, so he may well be back again, but I feel that's unlikely. According to Laura Miller's statement, currently they are recruiting for a general manager to replace Hudson, but Samantha Ryan will oversee the studio, with Christian Daly taking over lead development on Dragon Age 4 as executive producer. Matthew Goldman remains as creative director on Dragon Age 4, and Mike Gamble will continue to lead the Mass Effect franchise with the upcoming Legendary Edition remaster of the original trilogy, and the mysterious new entry that is said to be in development. Christian Daly, formerly of Blizzard, is a name that you may remember from my coverage of Anthem's rebirth as he was the head of that project. He's moved from fixing Anthem to developing Dragon Age 4, which was previously described as having some live service elements, and has already been rebooted internally at least once. He's gone rapidly from being in charge of Anthem's post-launch content to leading the Anthem Next relaunch to now leading the studio's current biggest project. Dragon Age 4 is Bioware's next shot at actually getting some success after back-to-back -back failures with Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem, but this doesn't sound like good news for Anthem 2.0, whatever that project really is. Daily's Twitter post suggests that Anthem's resurrection is continuing, though he failed to mention who is currently in charge or what sort of state the project is in. Bioware has at least four projects that are currently in various stages of development. Anthem Next, or Anthem 2.0, Dragon Age 4, Mass Effect's Legendary Edition, and a brand new Mass Effect game. Losing two of the most significant creative leaders in the studio does not bode well for any of these properties, especially when it caused a reshuffle of other staff members and without a proper general manager to keep things stable. We've seen virtually nothing from any of these projects, and now that two such senior staff have bounced, I'm not filled with confidence in the studio's future. Does this signal the final days of Bioware, or will it continue to limp on for a few more years? I reckon they may have at least one more flop before EA eventually pulls the plug. Whatever ends up happening with Bioware, I'm excited to see what Hudson and Dara go on to do, because based on their past work, odds are that it could be pretty great and well worth a look. And next up, with Christmas just a matter of weeks away, many gamers are eagerly awaiting their brand new PS5s, but many will be out of luck as the console is pretty much sold out everywhere, and many are even reporting that their consoles are being stolen by couriers. There are a few options for you if you are that desperate for one, as you can turn to scalpers, but they will often charge a hefty premium. Alternatively, you could go down a more legitimate route and buy one second hand, because yes, people are already trading them in, and many of them are probably from scalpers. UK retailer CEX specialises in buying and selling electronics, including games, consoles, peripherals, phones, at movies and music. I've shopped there many times myself and you can often get a pretty fair deal. But if you're eyeing up a PS5, get ready to part with £815, £365 above the standard RRP. If you're looking to sell one to CEX, they'll give you £650 cash, but I'd wager you'd get more than that on eBay because some of them are going up for a thousand. CEX is also offering the digital only version at a much more reasonable markup of £360, which is the same as the RRP, though it is currently out of stock. Compared to the Xbox, the Series X is going for 690 which is still a decent increase, but nowhere near as severe as with the PS5. Many have, unsurprisingly, taken umbrage with the huge price increase on the standard version. That price is dreadful! Come on, the RRP is 449. You're totally cashing in on this and are no better than the scalpers. Be fair, guys, yes, make a profit. I understand you're a business. Charge £500, but £815 is just far too much. Come on, man, the disc version costs like 
450 at game and you're going to charge an extra 350 for the PS5? Now the tricky thing here is that CEX is perfectly entitled to sell the machines at any price it wants. Legally, it could charge thousands for them and it would be completely fine. The problem is that it robs many consumers the wrong way, but so long as people are willing to pay that 815 price tag, CEX will keep selling the PS5 for that. The only way to stop the price being so high is if people refuse to pay it, which would force them to lower the price. However, demand is so very high that I don't expect CEX bosses to back down. Staff aren't happy with the situation either. Staff at a Brighton store, who chose to remain anonymous, spoke to Eurogamer saying, Obviously, none of us think it's good. We've been told that the price is that high to match with eBay, but that's when it was 750 it's now even higher. CEX is legally in the right to put the price at whatever they want, but morally I find it repugnant and think they're helping keep the scalping prices so high in a year when we could all use a bit less crap to deal with. I know a new console might bring someone's mood up and I know personally I use games as a stress release and to take my mind off things. Some staff are even expecting abuse from customers due to the high pricing, pricing that is decided by business executives, not the folks behind the desk. I completely understand the argument about the high price and of course there is a moral dilemma that comes with it. Am I expecting to receive abuse from customers when the stores reopen? Absolutely. Am I comfortable selling a £450 console for over £800? Not really, but if someone's going to pay it, I'm not going to turn them away. Staff have been told via email that if customers are complaining, they should explain that CEX is a lower price option than eBay or scalpers. I think this price is way too high, but no matter what anyone thinks about it, don't f***ing abuse retail workers for just doing their jobs. They don't decide this bullshit pricing, the executives do. We talked about the scalping situation in a recent podcast, and we do not agree with it at all and think it's wrong but it is legally totally fine and if people keep paying those prices sellers will keep selling. The only way to stop it is to just not buy but if you're willing to pay £800 for one then go right ahead. I however will be waiting until the console has some worthwhile games. And finally on the topic of worthwhile games many will consider Demon's Souls Remake to be the best PS5 has to offer at the moment as it can't be played anywhere else. Souls-like games have a reputation for being incredibly hard which leads people to add extra challenges on top of the already steep difficulty to really prove themselves. Continuing the trend into the new generation, someone has just beaten Demon Souls using just a dance mat. This incredible feat was achieved by YouTuber and Twitch streamer Luality. The footage you're seeing is her attempt at tackling Flame Luca, one of the game's toughest bosses, or at least so I'm told. She currently has over 38,000 subscribers on YouTube and 47,000 followers on Twitch. This also isn't even the first time she's achieved such an impressive victory, as she has also beaten Bloodborne with a dance mat. So next time one of you lot tells someone to get good, your opinion really doesn't mean shit unless you're this good. There are links to Luality's various social accounts in the description if you want to see more of her work. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. I've been Henry Cooper. That's all for today. Bye for now.